when he was just telling me the other day, man, these are a hard day to fill. Because as soon as school got me over, it was at the stage. This was a pretty good one. Your dad will see you Tuesday. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, yes, it's good to see you. Okay, we have Terry Thompson this morning from the Blind of Central Missouri. Oh, Tchaikovsky, uh, something, I don't know, you know. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> and, and then pronouncing some of their names, too. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah that was and it was funny, with the name Sokolowski, mm -hmm. people kept saying, you are listening to Sedalia AM, which, by the way, is thanks to Charter Communications. I, of course, am Doug Allen, here with you on this uh, terrific Thursday. And, uh, again, our thanks to our first set of guests. Uh, this morning uh, from the United Way and Terry Thompson from the Blind of Central Missouri and also Ellie Watson, the Executive Director of the United Way. We're now going to, in our, our second uh, segment, we're going to talk about uh, some of the entertainment that's out there and uh, we know that uh, one, of the, one of the best entertainment uh, values that you have uh, has got to be the different performances that get done uh, from the symphony. And uh, Kathleen uh, Boswell is here with us from the Sedalia Good News morning. Journal. Kathleen, how are you today? I'm fine, and as president of the Sedalia Symphony Society, I'm very delighted to be here and let the public know more about our concert Monday night and the whole season. And uh, it's going to be a tremendous season at that. We know that the end of the year is always the busy year for the symphony. At least I think it is, because yeah. you get to usually about four performances in the next four months that happens. Right. We'll have the one Monday night, and then in December we'll do our traditional Christmas Pops concert, and this year that is December 1st, the very first day of December. Um, and then the next Sunday, on uh, that makes it December 7th, we're doing the Handel's Messiah. So everything's really gearing up already. We are looking forward to it as well. And uh, Kathleen, when uh, we first talked with you uh, about coming in here, uh, then we thought maybe you were going to end up doing it by yourself, but you have brought a guest here for our listeners oh, that yes. has been here on our show before, so why don't you go ahead and introduce him. This is Byron Matson, and he's also on the Symphony Society board, and he is the one who really and truly loves and understands classical music. So I'm going to let him talk about the symphony's performance, and then I'll talk about our guest artist. Well, that's great, uh, because it's going to be a really wonderful program in the fact that it opens with a Beethoven symphony, and then after intermission going to River City Ramblers with Dixieland. This is going to be a wonderful program for every musical taste. It uh, certainly is so. And what I'm going to do now at this point in time, now that we've introduced the, uh, the River City Ramblers, I'm going to be playing in the background here uh, a little bit of their music just, to, just for some taste out there uh, for you. So you can take, take, you know, take a little bit in uh, on our listener side. So. We do appreciate that, but uh, but this is this sounds like a pretty fun group from what I know about them. They're they're quite comical. They entertain. They don't just go and sit and perform. They have some repartee among themselves and little comments to the audience. So it's a, it's a very free flowing, fun evening with them. What's the uh, what's how long does it take for you guys to set your schedule and get to your different performers to come in? We'll have a meeting tonight, and we'll probably be finalizing plans for next year, which will be our 75th season. We're trying to cook up some really extra special events, but we are usually a full year in advance of when we have our performers booked, because some of them have such busy calendars that you have to be on that long in advance. Now, my other question is, is uh, judging by this song, which by the way is the, the Dixieland uh, one step that you're listening to in the background, is uh, how much time or correlation does the symphony have to actually talk with these guys and figure out what it is that they want from the symphony uh, in their performance with them? Well, I think because the symphony and our soloists don't perform together, it works out really well. The orchestra has its function of opening the program and playing perhaps in between and then the soloists will bring an accompanist 
with them and they will set up their part of the program and either it will be as this opening program on Monday evening uh, the Beethoven three movements of the Seventh Symphony before intermission and then River City Ramblers will be on uh, without the orchestra so mm -hmm. they will be in and of themselves I thought every now and again you guys brought them up on stage and you got a chance to clash a little bit if you will or jam <laughs> Uh, was there a jam session among Stephanie people? <laughs> Not usually. <laughs> Several years ago when we had Black Cat Jazz here, which were part of the Duke Ellington uh, band, they, they um, went to the music classroom over at Smith Cotton to kind of have their little bit of warm-up thing because they had come from several places around the United States. And they let the kids in the, the high school music class jam with them and I think that was a real highlight of their their trip they thought that was an awful lot of fun I know the kids will remember it for a long time does the symphony enjoy a situation like this where uh, maybe they get a little bit of a bigger draw oh yes uh -huh. def definitely and I think a few years ago when the Kingston trio opened uh, that just about filled the auditorium yeah. so this is really uh, and I think River City Ramblers have a great name and that will be a great draw uh, for this opening of the 74th season. Now, how much, uh, how much work, because I, the way I understand it is, uh, you guys had said earlier, it's the 75th anniversary coming up next year. Mm -hmm. This is one of the oldest symphonies west of the Mississippi. Second only to St. Louis in continuous service. So uh, how does that make you guys feel? <laughs> Pretty well, proud. <laughs> for for, for a, a city of this size to even have a symphony is really quite wonderful. Now, I'm a newcomer. Uh, my wife and I moved here just over three and a half years ago, and to find out that there was a symphony was just really quite an addendum and a wonderful thing to know, along with the chorale and so many other wonderful things that do go on here in, in the city of Sedalia that unfortunately so many people don't seem to know about. Mm -hmm. And that's why having some radio time and, and other uh, advertising and public relations, uh, we really need to get the word out that we have this wonderful, wonderful uh, musical venue. Now, was that one of the reasons you came here to Sedalia then, or did you just stumble upon that afterwards? It was mostly a stumble upon afterwards. Actually, a Victorian brick house brought us to the city of Sedalia. But we knew about the uh, Ragtime Festival, and uh, we had heard then the, the state fairgrounds and the state fair, and so we tried to participate in, in many of these. And then uh, Kathleen uh, tapped me <laughs> a few years ago for the, for the symphony board, which has been really greatly enjoyable because I've always enjoyed classical music. Well, again, we're listening to the River City Ramblers in the background, and we're also talking about the uh, symphony performances that are going to be taking place, and we're looking forward to a, a great lineup up ahead. And uh, I guess my next question is, is on this performance, uh, what are we going to be keying in on for the symphony side of things? This is one of the really wonderful symphonies of Ludwig van Beethoven. Because of time constraints, we're not doing all four movements, which a symphony does have. But Harold Johnston is conducting the first three movements of the seventh. And it was really popular. I would say the fifth symphony of Beethoven, of course, uh, would be the most popular. Then perhaps the chorale symphony of the ninth would be the next most popular. Perhaps the heroic of the third. Uh, the Sixth Symphony is certainly called Pastoral, but right after that comes the Seventh of the Nine Symphonies. Really quite a wonderful work, not a, not a lengthy work, but absolutely wonderful. The first movement has a very long introduction before it gets into the cadence of that movement, and a beautiful juxtaposition of the strings and the woodwinds and the percussions. Absolutely wonderful. 